Good morning. I am Jennifer Kavanaugh. This is Between Worlds for April 7th, 2021. This morning, I want to talk about the hammer and the crash. Um, we're going to start with the hammer because this has been coming out for me the past um, couple days. So as I've just been going about my business, I've been doing a lot of work outside, getting things ready for our summer season here. And I keep hearing they're going to drop the hammer. The hammer is coming this week. They're going to drop the hammer. And, and I always see the image of like Thor's hammer when this comes into my mind, but I don't think it's Thor's hammer <laughs> that's going to be dropping. And, and along with this, what the, you know, I've been hearing with it is that um, there wasn't enough fear generated over the weekend and, and specifically here in Ontario. And so as we, um, moved into the weekend, you know, people were kind of just going about their business and, and they weren't really fearful. You know, we've seen a big shift in the past, you know, week or two, I think, where people are just kind of um, over it. And I, I liken it to watching a Netflix series, you know, when you get into a really good television show on Netflix and you binge watch for like an entire weekend. And at first it seems, it seems good. You get pulled into the plot line, you get sucked in, you kind of need to know what happens next. But then once your weekend is over and the show ends or it gets close to the end, you realize you kind of wasted all that time for what? for somebody else's story um, that you allowed yourself to get pulled into. And you realize you could have done a lot more fulfilling things with that time. You could have been more productive. You could have created something. You could have got something off your list. And you kind of have this like hangover effect. I think this is where we're at in the grand scale right now. We've been pulled into this storyline for such a long time. And, and people are starting to realize they've given a whole year of their lives to it. And, and they've got better things to do. They've got other things to do. Um, and so this is where we're starting to see some of these people who um, maybe were, were involved in the plot line now going, yeah, I've, I've given my time and now I need to refocus. I need to do something else. So I think there's going to be a push to generate more fear more fear to to try and draw people back into the story right plot twist is always how you how you get people back in when they start to get a little bit bored and and the intention is always to generate fear right and and i'm not going to be too much of a broken record here because i know i've talked about the um the use of fear quite a bit but i think it's another important time to bring it up is that the the purpose of this hammer i feel is to generate more fear so we have to do our best to to not fall into that trap and to um to stay out of that emotion as much as we can um, because the next couple steps are really going to be um trying to push that for us so um so look out for the hammer um you know it's coming you know, it's funny, they, they've given me another, another name um, for, for the hammer, but I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep it to myself this morning. All right. So that's the hammer. And the next is the crash. So the, um, there's a couple of things, there's a couple scenarios on that, that, that are coming up, but this is the most um, pertinent for me right now. And, and that is the crash down from these higher dimensions. As some of you star seeds, light workers know is we're all trying to move into these higher dimensional spaces. So you can say 5d, but I think some of us are going higher than that too. And we have these moments, right? And you know you're in that moment because time disappears. This time is a third dimensional um, experience. It's not a higher dimensional experience. So you get into these, these moments, these places, these worlds in your day where there's no time, where you forget about everything else that's happening in the world. It's like it doesn't exist, right? Going back to this concept I, I brought up a, a few days ago, if you don't hear a tree fall in the forest, does it even make a sound? Does it even exist? Did the fall exist? So when we don't observe something, it, it no longer exists. And, and we know when we observe something, we bring it into existence. So, you know, when we when we move into these higher dimensional realms, we can really cause this whole scenario to disappear um, in many aspects. The challenge is that we're often there alone <laughs> or we're with a small group of people, right? And, and then what happens is we interact with somebody else who's not in that space. Um, and perhaps we 
we move back into the third dimensional space for whatever reason. We have to pay some bills. We have to go to work. We have to deal with a client. We have to figure out what our business is going to do in the next two hours as they announce some new change, right? And we get this crash landing back into the third dimension. And this crash landing is interesting because we've just been in this higher dimensional space. We're starting to change our our templates, our patterns, how we think, how we, how we um, value different things in our lives, like money and relationships and time and work and so forth. And, and we start to see the potential. We start to see this new world. We start to exist in this new world. And then, and then we come back and it's harsh, you know? I liken it to the days when we were teaching hot yoga here and you'd be in this warm, cozy room in the middle of winter. It'd be snowy outside. Your your skin is warm. Your bones are warm and you're just cozy. And then class ends and you open up the door and you're hit with that like stark coldness. (laughs) You know, you immediately tense up and you think, geez, why am I leaving this place? I don't want to leave this place, but I have to because this, this time is over. I have to go do the other things I need to do. And it's the same thing with moving between this dimension and the third dimension is, is it gets cozy out there, but then we have to come back and face this reality. And the crash landing is really, you know, there's all these emotions that get stirred up about coming back because a lot of us, you know, we didn't, we don't really like being in this third dimensional space to begin with because it's harsh and it's cruel and, and there's all these painful emotions associated with it. But we also came here for a reason. And I think a part of that that crash back is to bring some of that energy from those higher dimensional spaces that we were in and bring them with us through the crash, right? Um, I've had some scenarios in the past couple of days where I, I'll just like disappear into these other spaces for a while, still working on stuff that that is um, affecting the 3D, but, but moving into it in a different way. And then when I come back, um, it, it's stirring up all these emotions when I'm interacting with others of, of people who, um, who feel angry that, that I wasn't there or um, people who are still existing in this, the older processes of how we work and communicate and expecting me to, to move back in there. And, and that's, I mean, that's, that's their stuff. But what's interesting is there's this layer of guilt that comes from my end of, oh yeah, I, for, I forgot that the business world acts in this way. <laughs> Maybe I, you know, I, I've, I've let myself down or I've let these people down in that third dimensional expectation, right? And so there's this very interesting little transitionary gray area as we move back and forth between these dimensions. And, and I think it's, it's good for us to recognize when we have the crash landings and forgive ourselves for the crash landings. This is part of the process, right? Um, I was watching a movie last night on Netflix um, about, the, about spies and the first female spies in, in the world war, and well, one of the world wars. And um, they were parachuting in, um, which is what people have been discussing again now with all the restrictions, parachuting into these countries and and some of the pilots getting hurt and having crash landings. Um, and it, it just had me thinking about, you know, that's that's from the physical perspective, but we're also doing this from the energetic perspective. And as we're the first ones that are parachuting back and forth between these worlds, we're going to crash right? And beating ourselves up about it isn't going to get us anywhere. Instead, I think sometimes we need to say, okay, well, we were the first one that did that, that crash landing. So, okay, we learned from it. We'll fix ourselves up, you know, and we're going to do it again. And we're probably going to crash again a couple times, right? Before we, before we figure out how to do a nice smooth landing. And the, the challenge is, is these emotions when we crash, Um, primarily lower us really quickly, right? And they bring us back into that third dimensional space, but then they layer it with all of these um, nefarious emotions that are going to lower our energy and, and, and prevent us from bringing back here what we wanted to bring back, right? We want to bring these elements of fluidity, of harmony, of, of being okay to, 
um, accept one another, forgive one another, you know, all of those emotions that we were experiencing when we were in that multidimensional space, regardless of what we were doing, we need to be anchoring those, those emotions and energies back here. So be mindful of your crashes, <laughs> you know, as much as you can laugh them off, um, but do the reflection as well to notice where you were getting triggered, but also notice where those crashes are trying to pull you back into the old systems, right? Of uh, these old expectations that exist in the third dimensional space, but maybe don't exist in the other ones. And maybe this, the crash is an opportunity for you and whoever else might be witnessing your crash to um, to reflect on how we may be tied into those systems and where we are trying to untangle those cords, those triggers, um, those ownership rights, right, of, of where we place our value. So for example, you know, I was thinking this week and, and discussing with my daughters as well, um, the, the time in my life when I learned that I didn't have to jump just because the phone rang. <laughs> and I know this, you know, some people don't like this. And it's funny because uh, as a business owner, you're often expected to run and jump as soon as the phone rings. And I've been called out on this a few times <laughs> over the years of, of not jumping and answering the phone immediately. But I also believe there's value in staying focused on whatever it is you're focused on, whether that's another client or a human being that's in front of you, or it's a project you're working on or something you're trying to establish. And um, so that constant, you know, jumping in distraction to yourself, to your soul, subconsciously communicates that that you are not as valuable as whoever it is. You don't even know who they are yet, potentially, (laughs) on the other end of that phone. And this was something I learned many years ago when I was um, well, working in the corporate world. And I used to be that person that was like, oh, my God, the phone's mm. ringing. Drop everything like mid-sentence and answer the phone, right? And then one day I was like, well, I have a voicemail machine for a reason. <laughs> People can leave me a message and I can literally call them back 30 seconds later or two minutes later or 10 minutes later when my conversation is done or my thought stream is finished or, you know, my focus is in a place where I can hold space for them better. And, and that was a life changer for me. Um, And I've talked to many people over the years who use the same strategy. Um, But it's just an example of one of those systems, right, of because the phone is ringing, I need to drop everything and do it. And there's all of these little ties that, you know, we all have. Um, And it's not none of them are our fault. They've just happened, right? Because there's also a tie like this with money. Um, If somebody's giving me money, then I need to drop everything and do whatever it is that they're asking, you know, or the reverse of that. If I'm paying somebody money, then they need to do whatever it is that I'm paying them to do and asking them for. And I'm not saying that people should steal from one another that no, 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 no. Um, But what I am saying is that we often forget about the human element when, you know, we've done a good job of compartmentalizing um, all these different aspects in the 3D world. And, and when we move into those higher dimensional spaces, there's no compartmentalization anymore. It's just a whole, right? We see a person, we're doing an exchange, we're serving one another, we have compassion for one another, we have um, empathy and compassion for individual human beings, um, regardless of what side they may be on in the exchange, you know, in every exchange, there's a giver and there's a taker, and, and we have compassion for both sides. So, you know, these are part of our crash landings is we, we crash down into this 3D world and all that guilt drums, drums up again because oh, I didn't do what the 3D world expected me to do in that moment, right? And I should, I should feel guilty. I should beat myself up for it. I should do X, Y, and Z because that is what I have observed and witnessed and learned in the 3D world. Mm-hmm. But if you're one of the pioneers that is making this dangerous, I don't think it's dangerous, but, you know, when we look at it from a, from a a war perspective, (laughs) and we'll say dangerous trip into these multidimensional spaces, we're trying to unravel that. Um, And it's our duty to pause 
after we crash and choose our response and, and pull out any of the remnants of that old system that want us to feel negative or guilty for crashing. Um, sometimes we need the mistakes. Sometimes we need the crashes in order to learn how to do it better. And, and that's where we're at. That's what, that's what I'm convinced. That's I'm convinced we're there. So, and I, and I, and all the people that I speak with, I'm hearing of lots of crash landings. I'm not the only one. I know I'm not alone in this experience. So let's rally behind each other. Let's support each other and, and have compassion for the other people that we may be in relationship or contract with here and, and recognize when they have a crash landing too. And maybe we're on the receiving end of that and, and, and we can have some compassion for them. And I know a lot of us are doing that. So so there it is this week, you know, not a lot of, not a lot of fun stuff going on, but it's part of the journey. And, and like I, I like to say anyway, is that, you know, this awakening process, it's not all rainbows and kittens, you know, sometimes we got to go through the mud. Sometimes we got to crash. Sometimes we got to face the hammer and, and maybe that's just where we're at, you know, but we can laugh along the way and we can support each other as we do it. So love to everybody. And we'll see you all soon.